Hi guys, I'm Nancy, and I'm going to show you how to do integration by parts. So you've probably been integrating for a while now, but it's like a zombie. You thought you had integration down, but now it's popped back up again, and now it's integration by parts. So let's do it. So take a look at this. Say you have to integrate something that looks like this. How do you do it? Well, first of all, ask yourself if maybe this is something that you do know how to integrate already, right away, just by looking at it. I don't. I mean, if this were just integral of x dx, could do that easily. If, if it were just integral of e to the x dx, you could do that with the basic integration rules, which hopefully you've learned already. But it's not that. We have the two of them multiplied together. We have this product here, which makes it trickier. So what do we do? Well, first of all, quickly, you should check to see if maybe you can just simplify this with algebra, combine it, and put it together. You can't do that here. I'm just saying it because sometimes you can, and that would make it a whole lot better, but that would be too easy here. So what do we do? The next thing you try is a substitution. So a U substitution. You should try it, see if it works and helps. I'm telling you that no matter what you choose for U, it, for the substitution, it's not going to make it integrable. Like if you pick U to be X, your DU won't be what you need to cover the rest of the integrand. If this were X squared, then a U there would help because this would be what you want for your DU, the right order to power of X, but it's not. But you should try substitution first. So then what do we do if all of our usual tricks won't work? Well, we need something new. Okay, this is the integration by parts formula. What is that? All it does is takes your integral, takes your integral, and it rewrites it using a new different integral. Why would we do that? Because hopefully the new integral is easier to do, something we can integrate. So a lot of the work of integrating is whipping something into a shape where we can actually do it. So this sounds great. Wait, what's the catch? You have to choose what's u and what's dv yourself and carefully in order for it to work. So choosing u and dv can be the most confusing part, the hardest part, I think. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to show you a trick in a minute, the LIATE, L-I-A-T-E acronym trick. But first, here's the general idea, a good rule of thumb. And you're going to see a lot of different rules and mixed messages out there, but generally for this, Whichever of your two factors gets simpler when you differentiate it, make that your u. And then the other one will be your dv, unless that one would get more complicated when we integrate it, which doesn't happen a lot. But basically, pick for u whichever of your two factors gets simpler breaks down, gets smaller when you take the derivative of it. So maybe the degree gets smaller, the order of it gets fewer terms. If it reduces in some way, make that your u, and then the other one your dv. And if this all sounds really confusing, that's because it is. So let me show you what I mean in this one. Which of our two factors, x or e to the x, gets simpler when you take the derivative of it. Well, the derivative of x is just 1. That's simpler. The x dropped out. It's a lower order or degree or power. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x again, which is not simpler. So probably our u is going to be x. And then the other factor, e to the x, should be our dv unless e to the x will get more complicated when we integrate it, which it doesn't because the integral of that is just e to the x, which is not more complicated. So we're not in danger of that. Our dv is just the other factor, 
e to the x. And this is important, whichever one you pick for dv also gets the dx. Because you need that differential there. So this is great. We have our u and our dv. Now we can plug it all into the integration by parts formula, but first we do need to find two more things quickly. We have to find du and we have to know v. Okay, so we're going to differentiate u and we're going to integrate dv. So we're going to get du by taking the derivative of u and we're going to get v by integrating dv. So if you take the derivative here, we get du by taking the derivative of x. Derivative of x is just 1. And anytime you're getting a du or a dv, don't forget the differential at the end, the dx. You need that, so don't forget that. And then if we integrate to get v, integrating e to the x is just e to the x again. So v is e to the x. And just in case you're wondering, in case you're a clever one, you don't need a plus c in this case. It won't matter in the end result, so you don't need to worry about writing a plus c at this point. So now we have everything we need for the integration by parts formula so we can plug in to the formula. Okay, so now we're going to use this formula on our integral x e to the x dx. x is u, e to the x dx is dv. And the first part of the formula, what this becomes is first u times v, which for us is x times e to the x. Minus v integral of v times du, and we have those. v is e to the x, du is 1 dx, so this is going to be minus the integral of v du, which is e to the x, 1 dx. And we don't even need to write the 1. This is the same as dx, the 1 is kind of implied, so it's going to be minus the integral of e to the x, dx, Okay, so we've used the formula. I know this looks like it got more complicated, but it's going to work out and we're almost done because this integral is something that we know how to do. This is an integration rule. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. So this is what we have when we integrate that. And at the very end, don't forget to add a plus c. This is an indefinite integral, it has no limits here, so you do need to add in the constant of integration at the end. Don't forget the plus c. So this is our answer for this integral. So integration by parts made this solvable, made it integrable, like magic. And if you want, you can check this answer, you can take what you got, differentiate it, and you should get back your original integrand, x e to the x, and you will. So in summary, all you need to do is pick u and dv, find du and v from them, and then use the formula. I mean, look, guys, if you pick the wrong u and dv the first time, don't panic. It's okay if it doesn't work out the first time, if it turns out that your choice doesn't actually break it down and help you integrate, you can try something else. No harm, no foul. I have done it. And part of getting good at something is bumping up against what doesn't work. So the more practice you get with it, the more skill you'll get at picking U and DV. Ah, but you say, what if you hate 
skills and hate developing skills and you would rather have a blind rote trick handed to you on a silver platter that always tells you what to pick for you, for sure. Well, then I have just the thing for you. So here's our trick. It's an acronym to help you pick you. So you will be the first thing you find in this list of letters. And DV will be the next thing you find. L stands for logs. That could be natural log LNX or normal log LOG. I for inverse trig functions like arc sine X, cosine inverse of X. A stands for algebraic or polynomials, so powers of X, X squared, X, X cubed. T for trig functions like straight up sine, cosine. E stands for exponentials like e to the x. So the trick is to follow these letters in sequence and the first one you find that you have is your u. So what do we have? We have x and e to the x. x is algebraic. e to the x is exponential. So we have a and e. If you follow those letters in sequence, the first one you encounter that we have is A algebraic. So that X has to be our U. U is X, and the next thing we find that we have is E exponentials, so that's our DV. DV is E to the X DX. So that's the trick. It's a fun party trick. Now let's really put it to the test. All right, look at this integral situation. Because I think the hardest part is picking U and DV, here are just a bunch of different types, a mixed bag of types you might see. It's a real mess, so let's talk about it. If you look at this one, integral of x, sine x, dx, we can use our trick. We have x, which is algebraic, sine x, which is trig, since a comes before t, this one is our u, and this is our dv. dv also includes dx, remember, so whatever you pick for dv also gets the dx, just like up here. By the way, if you didn't use a trick, it still works to think about it like how we were saying before. Whatever you pick for u, you want to get simpler when you take the derivative, which it does. And whatever you pick for dv, you don't want to get any more complicated when you integrate it, and this doesn't really, so that's why. But you can stick to the trick. These other two are kind of the same form, algebraic and trig, algebraic and trig, and you can see that the algebraics won out, they got placed as u because they appear first in our trick, and then these are dv. Only thing I will say is that in this one, you'll need to do integration by parts twice. Yeah, I know. That's a whole other video, but it's exactly what it sounds like when you do integration by parts and you get a new integral. You do integration by parts on that integral in its place, and if you do that, you will get the answer. But anyway, let's look at this kind. This one's here because I don't want you to think that anytime you see an x term that that's gonna be u for sure, because sometimes it's not, like here. Here we have algebraic and a log, and following our trick, since L comes first, our log will be our U, and the other part, x cubed dx, will be the dv. This also goes back to what I was saying. You don't want something to be dv if it's going to get more complicated when you integrate it, and LNX definitely does get more complicated, more terms when you integrate it but you can stick to the trick as well. What about this form? We have algebraic and exponential in all of these, algebraic exponential. Well, since we have A and E, A wins out and all of those algebraics are the U's and the rest is the DV's. This one, you will need to do integration by parts twice. I can see the future. It's a very bright future in which you need to do integration by parts twice for x squared minus 1 times e to the x dx, that integral. 
What about this type? Exponential intrigue. I haven't marked anything for this. To be totally honest, exponential intrigue, E and T, E and T, these are actually interchangeable. <laughs> I lied. This could be E-T, it's just that it'd be hard to pronounce. Instead of lied, it would be lied. So it's written this way, so you can pronounce it, but really, you can if you have only a trig and an exponential, you could pick either one to be your U and you will get the answer. It will work out. Also, you'll need to do integration by parts twice for that one. And one final kind. If you just have like one term in the integrand, ln x, arc sine x, turns out you can use integration by parts on something like this because the dx can be thought of as one dx and can be thought of as an algebraic term. And if you do that, like here you have algebraic and log. So log will be your u and the 1 dx will be your dv. Arc sine is an inverse trig, the i in our trick. It comes before algebraic, so that's the u and 1dx is your dv. So that's integration by parts. Just a couple things. If you ever see a definite integral with upper and lower limits where you need to use integration by parts, you can do it. It's just a little more work of evaluating the limits for each term. So in the formula, the uv term you'll evaluate limits for. The integral v du will have limits on it. If you ever want to derive the integration by parts formula, you can do that. You take the product rule and you integrate it and it's not that bad. That's a whole other video though. Also, there is a version of the formula, integration by parts, that's messier looking and it has f of x, g of x, f prime, g prime. It's not as easy to use. The kind we have is that we've been using is neater and more compact and it just came from a few substitutions from the other one but just know that it's like the same thing and that's about it just if you have an indefinite integral and you're doing this don't forget the plus c so i hope that helped you understand integration by parts i know calculus is exactly what you wanted to be doing right now it's okay. You don't have to like math, but you can like my videos, so if you did, please click like or subscribe.